Okay, the last talk of the session is going to be given by Julie Gard from Auburn University in the US and the title is Prevention of Neonatal Umbilical Infections in Holston Calves Through Accelerated Desiccation of the Umbilical Remnant Utilising a Novel Therapy. Very long title. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Um, he's already given the title, so I won't <laughs> say it again. Um, but we were wanting to look at an alternative to navel dipping. And we all know that navel dipping provides um, some attributes, prevention of umbilical disease. Um, we know that there's a high percent, 29% of the disease we see during the first three weeks of life is due to umbilical disease. Um, if we use navel dipping, it decreases it significantly, um, as much as 5 to 14%, from 20, 28% to 5 to 14%. Um, they've shown that calves with non-dipped navels have an increased uh, death rate, basically. Um, so you may have a death of 18% of the calves versus 7% of the calves if you dip them. Um, our standard has been iodine navel dip, um, and there was a discussion on our AABP list of this just not too long ago on iodine navel dip, and it's been great. It's been wonderful. Um, tincture of iodine, 7% is what we utilize in the U.S. I guess in Europe it's 10%. Um, has antibacterial, antifungal characteristics. Contains alcohol, which provides a drying effect, which is beneficial on that cord. Um, the, the ability to obtain tincture of iodine has become problematic due to crystal meth industry <laughs> in the U.S. And so it's made it into a uh, list, from a list two chemical to a list one chemical um, by the USDA, uh, the Drug Enforcement Agency of the USDA. Um, so the DEA now regulates any iodine products that contain more than 2.2% iodine, um, and it can only be purchased through a vendor, okay? Um, it is more costly now. One ounce might cost you around $17, $18. Gallon, um, $64 to $100. Um, allergic reactions occur with iodine as well, which is problematic. Um, cheaper products, if you don't get them through a, a vendor that's reliable, you can end up with contaminated products containing salmonella. They've shown this. Not really good to dip tea dens with salmonella. Um, Anyway, so looking at alternatives to iodine. Um, and so uh, Super 7 Naval Dip is one of those alternatives out there now. Um, it, and this dis is a list of all of its properties here. Um, but sodium hydroxide and sodium bicarb are, are really its two um, active ingredients. Um, so much as the Super 7, it is able to um, desiccate um, the umbilical cord, it eliminates growth of microorganisms greater than a five log, log bacterial reduction within one minute and negli negligible cytotoxicity profile um, on their studies. They did a safety profile in rabbits and they showed no edema um, and an irritation index of 0.5. Um, they tested for LD50 and that's where they fed rats. Uh, 20 mils per kilogram orally of a Super 7 um, for 14 days, and there was no evidence of mortality or toxicity observed in the rabbits. So basically, it's non-irritating, safe for um, use, and it's good to know that it can be consumed orally because if an animal, another animal licks and um, one another animal that's been uh, dipped with Super 7, um, you want it, want it to cause problems. Um, so our focus of this study was um, evaluation of Super 7 Naval Dip as an alternative to 7% tincture of iodine um, in neonatal dairy calves. Um, we looked at desiccation of the umbilical remnant, irritation of the surrounding skin, and comparison time to dry and costs of the product. So we had 100 um, neonatal Holstein heifers were utilized in this study from Auburn University Extension Dairy and Barrington Dairies in Montezuma, Georgia. Um, we had solution A and solution B. Um, and solution A was Super 7 navel dip, solution B was tincture of iodine. Both of these had the same color to them. The Super 7 looks like iodine so that you can see that you've dipped the cord. Um, 
And previous to utilizing these products, we took cultures of the products utilized to make sure there were no no and anti um, uh, no aerobic or anaerobic bacteria in uh, the products, and the results were negative on both of those dips. The workers uh, were blinded, so we basically put um, the product into um, the urine specimen cups, basically, but specimen cups <coughs> put uh, two ounces in each cup, so each calf that was dipped had a different uh, single cup, so there would not be any um, problems with cross-contamination. They were labeled A or B, and the workers didn't know which one was A or which one was B. Um, the umbilicus and the umbilical remnant um, and the surrounding tissue were evaluated at 48 hours, within 48 hours following dipping. Um, and the re results we saw were that the, the surrounding skin was clinically dry, appeared normal, no inflammation or discharge. Um, we had previously done a preliminary study looking at 40 Jersey and Holstein dairy calves where we dipped Super 7 navel dip um, just once shortly after calving and it looked like a clinically dried umbilical cord within 24 hours. Um, so this is what it looked like, pretty dried up within 24 hours. Um, oops, there we go. Um, so basically, after we went and evaluated the umbilical remnant, we also took a segment of that umbilical remnant, um, and it was placed in an airtight container um, at that 48-hour endpoint. Um, our experimental design of study one, we took that, um, that um, piece of umbilical remnant and looked at the moisture content uh, of that umbilical remnant at, um, uh, within six hours of sampling using a water activity meter. Um, they use water activity meters for assessment of moisture content if you're making beef jerky or whatever. Even paper has a moisture content of around 6%, 6 percent, 6 to 10 percent. So these samples um, were placed in 35 uh, millimeter culture dishes um, and exposed to normal environmental temperatures. During that period of time we we looked at the moisture content as soon as we got back and within 12 hour increments um, until we got to a percent of less than 10 percent moisture and the technician reading was blinded to the treatment. So basically what we found within 48 hours that um, Super 7 navel dip was 88% uh, of the samples had less than 10% um, moisture. Tincture of iodine, 58% had um, less than 10% moisture. By 60 hours, both of them were um, less than 10%. Um, statistical results of this, there was a strong association um, uh, between treatment A and drying at 48 hours. Um, and basically you have an odds of drying out at 48 hours was 5.31 times greater um, with Super 7 than tincture of iodine. Um, our second part of the study, um, we on the day of calving cut a long piece of umbilical cord, approximately four inches. Um, placed it into a bag, and then sectioned it into three equal one-inch segments. Um, each of those segments, one was put in tincture of iodine, one was put in Super 7, and one was put in a control. The technicians, again, were blinded, um, and, um, and, the, and the control segment was not put in any, any uh, substance whatsoever. They were put in the 35 millimeter culture dishes, um, and, um, and again, these samples were analyzed at 12-hour increments um, until they had less than 10% moisture. Technician was again blinded to the treatments. Basically, what we found at 24 hours, Super 7, 38% of the samples um, were desiccated less than 10% uh, moisture. Iodine, 15%. Uh, Control zero, 36, per, 36 hours. 90% of uh, Super 7 were desiccated to less than 10%. 87% of the samples for iodine, 40% for control. Um, and then at 48 hours, basically almost all of them were desiccated at this period of time. Obviously, some amount of evaporation uh, occurs when you compare to uh, life out in a calf hutch, 
urination, sitting down in uh, wet hay or, or whatever else may increase the desiccation times. Okay, statistical results, overall treatment effect. Um, all three treatments were evaluated at the same time for um, with a P less than 0 .0001. Um, for individual treatment uh, comparisons from A versus B, A versus C, and B versus C, um, all 0 .0001 statistically significant. Um, we also looked at serum samples to make sure so much as the calves evalu evaluated IgG, um, their passive transfer did not have an effect. Um, so we looked at total protein and specific gravity and IgG levels. Um, we measured specific uh, gravity utilizing a digital refractometer. IgG levels were determined by immunodiffusion, radial immunodiffusion kits. Um, uh, range of total protein was 4.5 to 7.2 grams per liter. Um, range of specific gravity was 1032 to 1048. Range of IgG was 8 to 17.6. Um, the so much as the range of the navel dip group, or average, um, excuse me, of the navel dip group was 13.7 mg per mil, and the tincture of iodine group was 13.4 mg per mil of IgG. So very similar. Um, basically, um, of the, we looked closely at the groups that were desiccated less than 10% moisture by 60 hours for the Super 7 group and for for the tincture of iodine group. Again, to really hone in on those groups to make sure there was no difference significantly in level of IgG. It was 14.1 for the Super 7 group and 13.4 mg per mil for the IgG group. So basically, um, total protein, IgG, and um, specific gravity were not sig significantly different between treatments. So immune status of the calves did not have any effect. No infection around the bilicus was noted um, to previously when we dipped those animals, whether it be tincture of iodine or Super 7. So cost analysis, of course it depends where you're getting it from, from the vendor. 7% um, tincture of iodine may run you as high as $350 per gallon for a USP grade, usually rounds 100. Um, if it's a non-USP grade, in other words, you run the risk of contamination by um, bacteria such as salmonella, if you don't buy USP grade, um, is around $65. Super 7 runs you about $60 for a gallon, so um, your savings anywhere from $6 to $40 or more per gallon. So basically, our results appear to be uh, navel dip, Super 7 navel dip appears to be superior to tincture of iodine in its ability to desiccate the umbilical remnant um, and is a competent navel dip, so an alternative to tincture of iodine. Um, so with that, that's, I will take questions. I'd also like to acknowledge Inovacin and Barrington Dairies, Dr. Graves that did the statistics, and Dr. Sue Duran um, who helped with this as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.